What is going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Another day, another grind, but this one's also pretty damn important because it's uh, the largest buy-in that we've had so far. This is on the schedule. It's the $10,000 buy-in super turbo bounty event. 20 minute levels, super quick, and every single person you knock out, you get $3,000. So uh, the prize pool is like 6K into the prize pool, 1,000 to the admin fee, and then 3,000 to uh, the bounties. Let's do it. And I also figured out finally why I haven't been winning the Luckbox card protector. Brought it back, it was at my house, I like lost it, I found it, it's here, I'm ready to win. That's the reason why I haven't been winning this whole entire series. I'm ready to ship this thing. Uh, if I actually win this tournament, then uh, there's clearly some, some madness here. But uh, we're gonna hop in right now. The tournament just started. We're gonna start at level one, because it's a bounty, it's a big buy-in, it's a lot of money. So let's do it. Upon sitting down at my table draw, I see Andrew Leitenberger or Lucky Chewy on my left, Dan Zack, the player of the year for this actual WSOP, and Chris Mormon on my right. Three crushes the table. I feel like I'm pretty screwed, but let's battle in with 60,000 in stack. The first thing I pick up, Ace King of Spades. Wow. Decent start. I raise preflop and get called by two players and see a pretty bad flop of Queen 5-6. I think action checks all the way around on the flop, and sadly, I am going to have to fold to a turn bet when I don't improve. So the first premium into the muck, but luckily, into level two we go now, I pick up pocket kings. I'm on the big blind, and action folds around to the small blind, who raises to 1,000. Let's freaking go. Time to three bet and get the pot bigger. I size to 4,000, and he calls. Going to a flop now of ace, nine, deuce, to diamonds, oh man. Don't love this situation. Kings are clearly just ace magnets here, and without a diamond in my hand, action goes check, check. When the turn comes, the king of hearts! Oh my god, get bailed out. He checks it, unfortunately, kind of wishing that he committed some money into the middle here, but I'm going to go for value now. With a very strong hand, I bet out 6,000. And for 6,000 here, he thinks about it for a while and ultimately ends up making the call. So love to see some action going on when I turn a set. The river is the 10 of clubs, basically a brick besides queen jack being the nuts. But here we are. He checks for a third time and I'm going to bet now for value. And I decided to go for 16,000. And this player thinks about it and bad news. Sadly, he ends up just folding and letting his cards go. I don't love it, would have obviously loved to get paid, but I'll take the first winning hand in this massive $10,000 buy-in. I did mention earlier that this is a super turbo, so blinds increase really quickly, and now we're into level four, where I pick up king-queen offsuit on the button here, and there's an under gun raise to 1,000. Player to my right now, Sean Winter, who just sat on the table. He's in the cutoff and makes the call, playing in ultimate position here on the button. I decide to call as well, which entices the big blind to calls. So four ways to a flop of ace jack three with two clubs. Action checks to Sean Winter, the cutoff on my right, and he bets out 3,200 here. Not going to go anywhere here, I think. I have the king of clubs to potentially go backdoor clubs. I have a gutter to the nuts, and yeah, I have a really strong hand overall with blockers, so I make the call, and the on the gun player who raised preflop, he calls as well. So now we're going three ways to a turn, which comes the bink 10 of clubs, just drilling the gutter, and I have a royal draw as well with the king of clubs. Anyways, the cutoff continues to bet out 4,300, which is a pretty small amount. And when it's on to me here against these world-class players, I have to try to play as well and as balanced as I possibly can. And with specifically King Queen, with the King of Clubs, I feel like there's certainly merit to raising here. But considering we're multi-way and considering that these players obviously can have flushes, I don't want to value on myself and I just want to play my hand as best as possible. So I'm pretty unsure whether a call or raise is preferred, but in game I decided to just make the call as I don't think either option is bad. I have such a strong hand and the under the player decides to get out of the way now. So we're going to go to a river which comes the 10 of spades now so the board is paired i'm not feeling as comfortable as i was so i lose two flushes i lose two full houses and now this player bets for a third time and another small amount to 5500 now it feels pretty clear that i can't raise even though this is such a small bet I'm hoping to just win against maybe trips, maybe an ace. So I make the call and he shows pocket threes. Oh, flop the set, rivered a damn boat. I wanted the dealer to give me 110. 
I didn't need the dealer giving me two. So here we are. After this cooler, I give him the chips and I'm back to around starting stack. The next clip we're going to see is pretty insane. It's level six of the tournament and we see a four way all in for a 300 big blind pot. Not something you see very often in the high roller tournaments here, but it's aces versus kings versus jacks and ace king. And of course, why wouldn't pocket jacks spikes the flop and wins a monstrous pot. Not great news that the person actually won was Andrew or Lucky Chewy. So he's a dangerous player to my left and has a mountain of chips, which is going to be pretty hard to navigate this tournament moving forward. On break right now. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What, uh, that ridiculous hand just happened. Jax, of course, wins. Four-way all-in pot, level six. Everyone had like 80 big blinds. That was just the, the craziest thing. I wish we got like the table because uh, <laughs> last person to act, I think it was Sean, he was just like, what the fuck's going on facing three all-ins? Madness here uh, at the 10K turbo. It would be nice to run deep in this one or at least uh, at least just survive and, and get enough content because this is an expensive tournament. It's really cool to be in this atmosphere because like I had Phil Ivey sit directly behind me on a different table. I had Negrano right in front of me. The, the field is, is stacked. And as someone who's really new to the game and being able to play in this tournament is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but thank you for the support on the channel. It's been a rough WSOP, but um, I don't know. I'm just grateful for the opportunity to play in this thing. Grateful that I'm just in Vegas to play cards. Just trying to put everything into perspective. Thank you, Landon Tice, for that. I uh, just wanted to take a moment to uh, address some of the negativity that I've had from my emotional negativity from the past few tournaments. Just showing transparency of how I feel when I bust out tournaments. It's not great, but uh, it's nice to just wake up every day motivated to grind, fire away again. And this tournament's cool. Like I said, I'm, I'm playing with literally all the best players in the world in a bounty format, in a, tur in a turbo format at that too. So I don't know, I'm just trying to run good because obviously everyone's really, really good <laughs> at my table. And that's it. It's a fun experience, I'm looking forward to it. We're just on break right now. And after 10 minutes or so, we're gonna go back into playing. I'm a little card dead. Just trying to play every hand the best I can and given each situation, so that's it. Try to run good. That's the only thing I can say. Just try to go in with the right mindset and whatever happens, happens. After the break, we progress to level seven. Blinds are increased. I have about 50,000 in stack and I pick up jack eight of clubs on the button. Action folds around to me. This is a pretty standard raise. So I open the things up to 2,500 and I get the small blind to fold, but the big blind defense. So going to a flop of queen jack 10, two spades. With middle pair and a gut shot straight draw, certainly can go either way with a check or bet. I decided to just check this one back and see a turn, which comes the six of clubs. All right. Here he decides to bet out 3,000, and I think I just have a really easy continue. I have a good pair, I have some showdown value, and a straight draw, so let's continue with this. I make the call for 3,000 and see the river, which comes the nine of hearts. He bets out once again for 10,000, and I now have a really good bluff catcher. I just have the second nuts. It would be much better to have the actual nuts with a king. But here we are. I make the call for 10,000. No decision here with a straight. And he has king four off suit. Oh, Jesus, man. In this $10,000 buy-in, I'm just running into it over and over again. And constantly having the second best hand gets a little demoralizing and frustrating. But we're here to battle. Time to regroup and figure it out. My chip stack bleeds all the way down to about 35,000 and we're in level eight now. Blinds have increased and I have ace 10 of hearts in early position. I raise it up to 2,400 on a pretty short stack, folds around to the big blind player who is none other than Carrie Katz himself, the founder of Poker Go. He makes the call. Going to a flop of 6-3 deuce, he checks over to me and this is a pretty miserable flop for my opening range. So I check this one back and see the six of spades on the turn. Carrie now decides to bet out 5,000 and I'm pretty aware that he knows that this board is, should be really good for him and he should be betting really big. So I make the call with ace 10 high on the board pairing six. Seems like a decent card for me anyways. We're going to a river now, which comes the five of clubs. And he four makes a straight. This board just smashes his range overall. And uh, he thinks about it and uh, ends up firing out 12.4K. Uh, I have 27,000 in my stack. And this is a miserable spot. 
And I'm just thinking in my head, like ace high can be good here sometimes, right? And could it be good against the most wealthy person in this room by far? If there's anyone in this room that could bluff for this buying of a tournament, it's certainly going to be Carrie Katz. So, you know, maybe he's bluffing. Maybe he wants to give some chips back to fans of Poker Go. So basically for my tournament life, as if I make the call and am wrong, then my stack in tournament life is crippled. I make the call because why not? He might be rich enough to bluff here and he has king 10 for king high. Let's freaking go. The hero call works with ace high. Luckily, he just didn't have a pair or lucky he wasn't even trying to bluff with like a pair of deuces or something like that. And wow, this feels really good to take down. And my chip stack is back to around starting, which was much needed. We get involved the very next deal. Pocket sixes under the gun, and I raise things up to 2,400. Let's get involved. The player by left, Chewy, he three bets to 3,200. And surprisingly, I see a cold call from the low jack. And on top of that, the big blind calls the three bet as well for 7,200. So I'm pretty much priced in here to make the call. So let's flop a six in the flop and get stacks in, right? We're gonna make the call here and see a flop four ways, which comes queen 10. 10-6, yes, fuck, let's go. This is all I've been waiting for. Been running pretty bad so far and flopping bottom set is just a dream. The big line actually does something really interesting. It bets 1,200. He has like 10,000 behind left in his stack and, you know, maybe thinking that other people might be really aggressive by raising since there's a bounty in play. I decide to make the call and disguise the strength of my hand. The player on my left, Chewy, he ends up folding, but the low jack bails me out. He raises the hell up to 20,000. And what's cooler? The big blind jams too. So his $3,000 bounty is up for grabs. I have bottom set and I'm so committing my stack in here. I rejam. It's not a whole lot more. It's 48,000 total. So about 28,000 more for this low jack player to make the call. Seems like he's committed because he can't fold, getting too good of a price. And it's a three-way all in when he makes the call. Playing a huge one for my tournament life here in this 10,000 freaking dollar buy-in. Let's hold the low jack player. The big stack who covers me has king jack. The big blind has king six. All right. Let's just hold. The red out comes clean. The bottom set is going to hold. I find a massive way to almost 2.5x my stack. I pick up a $3,000 bounty and I'm on the freaking board. It has been such a rough run of tournaments so far. I'm so glad that I can find some run good here in the biggest buy-in so far of this WSOP. After this big hand, unfortunately, I go to a little bit of card death where nothing happens and we're progressing all the way to level 12. Skipping a bunch of levels, I vote 150 in my stack and here we go. I have eight nine off suit in the big blind and a relatively tight older player opens to 6,500 from early position. And yeah, expect him to have a narrow range. I decided to make the call here for a good price and see a flop of 10, seven, six. The sun run continues, just banking the nuts. What's unfortunate is that action just goes check, check, as I don't expect him to hit this board too often, and we're going to go to a turn which comes the queen of spades. All right, I'm definitely going to try to pump out as many chips in the middle as possible, so I bet out 15,000 here, sizing up, and he thinks for a while, and expect him to have a queen when he makes the call. Don't think he has too many over pairs here in this spot, but who knows? We're going to go to a river which comes a 10. The board is now paired. I don't expect them to have a 10 too often, but maybe just a queen. And, uh, you know, from my experience so far in this WSOP, older people hate folding to younger players like me. So he has about 60,000 in his stack, and I am going to try to go for all of it. Not only would I get all the chips if he calls, but I also get the $3,000 bounty, which is huge. So I put them all in and jam, and sadly, he folds, but he thought about it for a very long time. So I put him in a tough spot. Ultimately, he made the right decision real time, which is a little unfortunate and frustrating, but whatever. I'll bink the nuts, make a little bit of chips and chipping up. All right, we're on a quick break. Unfortunately, a little card dead. Uh, in these turbos, like we played like uh, two hours and I didn't really show that many hands, but it's I'm turning in the right direction. I have more chips than the last hand that I talked about. So that's it. Playing some small pots or no pots. It is what it is. The things with these turbos is that you gotta just run hot the whole time, pick up hands the whole time. So we'll see. Blinds are gonna go up after this break. 
and I've already surpassed expectations. I have made it through more than halfway through the field. That is a big win. I'm free rolling everything else. Obviously, I want to win. I'm here to win, I'm trying to win, do my best, and uh, chip up and maybe collect another bounty or two. That'd be nice. We'll see. After the break, payouts have been announced. 63 players make the money, and first place gets $587,000. And oh my god, we get a surprise guest. Phil Ivey is playing this tournament, and he sits down across from me. Oh my god, I get to play with a legend himself in this tournament here. Pretty cool experience, and let's try to get involved against him. I end up playing for two full levels with Phil Ivey, but sadly, my table ends up breaking. I don't get involved, but now the next table, I have Alex Foxen to my right. Just every single table is littered with pros. Let's try to navigate here. This next hand, I pick up ace nine offsuit on the button and action folds to me. The small blind and big blind player have pretty small stacks and considering we're playing about less than 20 big blinds deep, bounties are also really important here and I just have a good hand to just go all in, so I do that. I jam, small blind folds, and the big blind looks at his cards and says he has to call. So maybe he has a worse ace than me, hopefully. He has ace queen when he makes the call, shit. Not great, but the flop comes ace nine. Let's go. All clubs as well. I'm sitting with the ace of clubs. I turn the complete nuts. No drama here. I got it in bad. I ended up ahead. And this is a much needed pot after being car dead for like five levels in a row. Nice pickup. And also the second bounty I have taken so far. Following hand, blinds have increased. And I pick up king jack of diamonds under the gun. I raise things up to 16,000 and fold around to the big blind. Our buddy Alex Fox and pretty good at poker, I would say. He just won the $250,000 buy-in high roller tournament. Anyways, he makes the call and it's time to battle. Going to a flop of 4-3 deuce to diamonds. He checks it over to me out of position and I'm going to be taking every single spot in this tournament and playing high variance. Especially against good players here, I could be checking a lot of the time, but with my flush draw and two over cards, I bet 25,000. A little bit on the larger side here and surprisingly, uh, or maybe not surprisingly, he takes the aggressive route and check raises to 55,000. Basically a min raise here and... Look, I'm looking at a stack. I have a little bit more chips than him. He has about 110,000 more behind, and I have two over cards. I have a flush draw. Like I said, I'm taking every single spot. I announce all in, three bet all in, and he quickly folds. Nice to have a pickup of chips here and take them against the best player at the table. And moving on to the next hand, I pick up ace jack of diamonds. There's an under the gun all in for 80,000, and I make the call in the big blind with a good hand. He has ace nine off suit, so that's the hand that we were able to crack ace queen with. And the flop is a damn nine. Oh man, seems like ace nine is unstoppable here. I unfortunately lose when I was extremely ahead pre flop, but who knew? Ace nine is just the complete nuts, and I don't pick up the bounty. On top of that, I also lose a good chunk of chips before getting dealt the next hand with ace 10 off suit. I'm in the small blind, and the middle position player shoves for 125,000. All right, action folds to me, and like I said, I'm taking every single spot. Maybe this hand is a pip too wide, but bounties are worth a lot. Trying to pick up chips and bounties all at the same time. I make the call, and the big blind folds. Unfortunate to see that this time I am the one massively behind. He has ace jack off suit, so just one kicker too low. And a run out comes where ace jack off wins, as the majority of the time as it should. After winning some really big pots, I lose two all ins, and now my stack is really small, down to 80,000. Like I said, in hindsight, this ace 10 offhand probably could have just folded, maybe a pip too wide to call, but. Oh well, I was playing high variance and it got to the best of me here. So I'm sitting with a small stack and blinds are increasing and I'm sitting with eight big blinds. I'm under the gun and peel ace six off suits and we're playing seven handed, which is much better than eight or nine handed. So one less player to get this jam through helps a little bit. So I decided to go all in, especially with the big blind coming. I don't want to be sitting with five big blinds after the blinds come through. So I jam, feel uncomfortable, feels a little wrong, but folds around to the cutoff who has a similar size stack and ends up making the call. Everyone else folds and he has king queen off suit. So I'm actually ahead. This is a massive sweat. We're going to a flop where it's clean. The turn and rivers are good as well, and ace high is going to win. You know what's also the crazy thing? I have good news and bad news about this hand. I actually didn't find a double up, because this player had less chips than me. He had 78,000 in stack, so I actually stack him and take a bounty. 
What an unconventional way to collect my third bounty of the day. So now what's cool is that I have three bounties and I have 9,000 in my pocket. So I'm basically in this tournament for just $1,000. With 99 players left, it's becoming a shove fest. Everyone is short stacked and I have about 150,000 in stack where level 18 approaches and comes 81 players left. So 18 players left to be in the money and I have 12 big blinds and a dream. And moving on, level 19, I'm screwed basically. Blinds have increased and I have 10 big blinds with 77 players left. This hand with queen eight offsuit in the big blind, the chip leader raises to 30,000. Folds around to me here, and I'm not going to feel comfortable playing this hand, but I just have to make the call for just one big blind. So let's hit something and jam. We're going to go to a flop of 10 10 7 rainbow. I have nothing here. That's not what you call hitting and jamming. So action goes check, check. The turn doesn't bring me any help. It's a three of diamonds. So once again, sitting with queen high, I check, he bets, and I fold. So after this unfortunate hand, I have 100,000 in my stack. And moving on to the next hand, I have six big blinds in my stack now. There's 74 players left, 11 players to make the money, and it's do or die time. I peel queen jack off suit. I'm in the cutoff. I'm in late position here, and there is a hijack player who raises preflop, and I have Broadway cards. I have six big blinds. Let me know in the comments below, would you jam here or would you fold? Because ultimately I ended up going all in. Folds around to this player and he has an easy decision, snap calls with ace jack offsuit. So not great. I'm heavily dominated. I need to find a queen or a king 10 high board. Dealer, give me some help. <laughs> Sorry, <man. laughs> The red out comes and I'm out. His ace jack is going to beat my queen jack, and that is how I got so close to making the money, yet so far to actually not cash for any profit. <sighs> it's hard to be upset in a turbo format like this, but so close to making it in the money. I lost only $1,000 today, which is actually not bad, but it was uh, as close as I could have gotten, as deep as I could have ran. Queen jack with six big lines, like, what more can I ask for? I don't think I even could have folded my way into the money. So I needed to double up, needed to get lucky. Did not, it's just painful series. I just want to win, but uh, I have three of these, which is nice. So I get 9,000 out of my 10K. Uh, not a cash, unfortunately, but thanks so much for watching. It's always demoralizing when I lose. I always take it really badly, especially like three seconds after I bust. I busted in 70 second, 63 make the money. On to the next video, on to the next tournament. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. It was a lot of fun. Phil Ivy, though. What? Phil Ivy. Played with him. That's cool to say. I uh, wouldn't be here without the vlog. Thanks. I'll just, I'm ending it. Signing off. See ya.